What happened in Alabama last night? Give me your analysis. Oh, wow. Where do I start? A lot happened in Alabama <laughs> last night. It was a very, very, very close race. But what you saw was the rejection of Trump-style politics. I think it's important for people to understand that what they've seen from President Trump, from his behaviors, you can't emulate that and continue to win across the country. That is definitely something that we're starting to see more and more uh, aligned with him. That's not something that other people can pick up and imitate and expect to win. And not for nothing, but Roy, you know, Roy Moore was a pretty extreme guy. And uh, I think that there was a rejection of all the things that Alabama voters know about him, whether it be, hey, anything past the 10th Amendment, we don't really need it. We're good. If you, if you know anything about the Constitution and what those amendments are, that's a pretty bad way to think about yeah. governing this country. Also talking about who, has, who deserves to have a seat at the table and also the other extremist stuff that's come out of his mouth and, of course, the allegations of sexual misconduct and being a predator, you know, that didn't work out very well for him. Yep. All right. Richard, you may have a different opinion on what happened in Not Alabama so fast, my friend, <laughs> as uh, they say on, uh, uh, at Lee Corso says. A C- couple of things I think to consider. Um, n- number one, uh, Roy Moore was a flawed candidate. It was a very flawed candidate. Um, I think... Luther Strange and insert name of other Republican here probably wins the Senate seat last night, in my opinion. Um, uh, so I think you have to put all of that into perspective. The Democrats, I think, raised outraised him two to one. There was a lot of national money that flew in there. The Republican establishment never really got behind Roy Moore. Uh, the, uh, President Trump got behind him very late in kind of this staged uh, uh, conversation and stages to get behind him. So, I mean, I think you have to put all of that in perspective. Good Democrat candidate, give you credit for that. Bad Republican and the good Democrat candidate can't get over 50% of the vote because of the write-in vote. So again, I, I think if you put that in the, the whole of the perspective, it was, it was a win for the Democrats. Don't know if it was an outright rejection of everything. That's Republican Richard Beard and Democrat Jessica Saban with some next day analysis of the Alabama U.S. Senate race. I'm joined now by Rex Nelson with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette, former aide to Governor Mike Huckabee and all around political animal. Welcome back. <laughs> Good to be back. And you made a prediction earlier in the week at the Political Animals Club that you thought Doug Jones would win by the narrowest of margins and he won by the narrowest of margins. Well, as, we, so as, as we say in Arkansas, even the blind hog found, <laughs> finds an acorn now and then, uh, popular saying, and I think I was the blind hog in this, uh, in this incident. When but, you, you know, but when you see what happened in Alabama and you put it in the context of what we've seen with the first year of the Trump presidency and some other special elections that have been out there mm-hmm. that uh, have uh, gone well for Democrats overall, do you think we're setting up for a wave election next year? No, I don't. I don't. I think this was a very special circumstance. I mean, Roy Moore's not a normal Republican candidate. And as I mentioned at the Political Animals Club on the day I made the prediction, I spent a lot of time in Alabama during my years with the Delta Regional Authority. Uh, then Governor Bob Riley of Alabama was our state co-chairman. And I was in and out of Alabama a lot, got to know a lot of people. And I guarantee you, there are a lot of people in Alabama that were tired of being embarrassed on the national stage and the international stage. This race was attracting international attention even. And they came and they voted to kill off Roy Moore now. And a lot of those will come back to the Republican Party in 2020. Yeah, Nick Saban got a few write-in votes too. Yeah, yeah. I think he finished third in the race, didn't he? (laughs) When you see uh, what's happening in Arkansas politics this year, though, we do have a lot of newcomers on the scene. Earlier in the show, we had Chinton Desai Mm -hmm. on. We've had Jared Henderson on. Um, We've talked to a couple of the others that are out there. Josh Mahoney, Hayden Shamel, Paul Spencer. Um, Do you... Think, what, what do you make of this new blood in Arkansas politics, particularly on the Democrat side? I, I don't know if victories are in their mm-hmm. uh, windshields uh, necessarily, but it is refreshing to see some new young candidates oh, we haven't I, seen I, before. I, I think that's wonderful. I think we need talented, smart young people on both sides, on both in both the Republican Party and the Democratic Party. And I tell you, uh, I, I'm a strong believer in a, in a two-party system. I said that for years when Democrats were in control and Republicans were trying to build. Now that Republicans are in control, that competition is a good thing. And I tell you what these young Democratic candidates do, they force Republicans in their primaries to elect more pragmatic, more moderate candidates who are willing to compromise, who can actually get things done for our state, rather than 
the Roy Moore types, if you will, out yeah. there. So I think it's a good thing for both parties, to be honest yeah. with you, not just the Democrats. Right. It's a good thing for the Republican Party because it forces them to be more moderate. Yeah, and I left out Gwen Combs in that list of newcomers mm -hmm. there too. We just had her on last week. All right, enough politics. Let's talk about duck hunting. You had a great <laughs> column earlier this week about the Perry brothers yeah. and their effort to kind of resurrect uh, what once was a name brand uh, apparel company uh, yeah. in the duck My, my hunting father business. was an old sporting goods dealer and most of my hunting apparel growing up was the Ducksback brand. Well, Ducksback went away and uh, the Perry brothers of, uh, of Little Rock, some of us will remember when they started the McAllister clothing firm and Scott Perry was telling me in our interview, you know, I was young and I was in my 20s and I really didn't know what we were doing, but they had a lot of success with it, sold it at a profit. Now they're trying to go back and resurrect that Ducksback brand and uh, having some initial success, basically just selling in this region of the country right now in Arkansas, Louisiana. Louisiana and Mississippi, they hope to take that national, and I think they have a chance to be, frankly, Roby, one of the next great Arkansas business success stories yeah. if this thing really well, takes off. I'd love off. to see it, and they're fun guys too, so yeah. good, good folks there. I did not know that your dad was in the sporting goods yeah, business. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Oh, I had right. a company called Southwest Sporting Goods in Arkadelphia, so I always got a good discount on my hunting <laughs> hunting and fishing <laughs> stuff growing up. All right, what else you got on the uh, Rex radar column-wise? What's coming up? Well, you know, I, I'm venturing off next week because uh, it's such a part of our culture this time of year into uh, duck hunting again. There's a great new coffee top uh, table size book on Arkansas duck calls. Uh, we have this tremendous tradition in Arkansas of duck calls. It goes back a hundred years and some of the masters at doing that. It's in beautiful photography in the book. So I'm, I'm looking at that also. And then uh, the following weekend, the weekend Right before Christmas, uh, I'm venturing off and uh, discussing some of the things that are going on in downtown Little Rock right now as they try to revive the downtown core in the capital city. And then also we'll be doing a Sunday column the day before Christmas on some of the Arkansas Christmas traditions that we all like to celebrate oh, and remember. It's always good stuff. You can catch this stuff online at ArkansasOnline.com, but you'd prefer us buy a newspaper. And a absolutely. Get the I'm old black school. And white yeah, yeah. Get that subscription. There, so. Have it right at your doorstep every morning. <laughs> I have it in my doorstep. Good, so good. Me anyhow. too. All right. He's Rex Nelson with the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. Thank you. Thanks, Robert. Early Merry Christmas yeah, to you. Yeah, early Merry Christmas well. to you. All right. That is all for our program. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time.